Hello and welcome to the Car Kerna channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the current generation Toyota Highlander, the 2020 and up. We're going to do a small review. We're going to talk about some uh, notable features. We're going to talk about the drivetrain and we're going to talk about some things I like, some things I don't like about it. And then we're going to talk about some common problems with this generation. One thing about my car reviews, if you are a new viewer, I don't exactly count how many cup holders there is in a car. We're just going to talk about the real world stuff that might interest you if you're looking to buy one or even if you own one. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get to work. Let's start with a mechanical review of the Highlander. There are two possible engines. One of them is the 2GR FKS 3.5 liter V6, like you see right here. And then in the hybrid variant of this Highlander, there is the A25A 2.5 liter four cylinder. Now let's focus on the non-hybrid first. It has the 2GR FKS 3.5 liter V6, made it to an eight speed transmission and folks, this is exactly the same engine and the transmission from the previous generation, not all the way, but from 2017, 2019. Not really much have changed. There are a few tweaks here and there, battery location change, small things. And all this happened because this is a TNGA car, unlike the previous one. Otherwise, everything is very similar or exactly the same. On the hybrid side of things is when things really changed. Now we have a four cylinder engine and some people will like that, some people will not. The previous generation hybrid variant had a V6, also had a 2G RFKS. That was great, it had a lot of power. However, they did this change for gas mileage. Obviously, this is hybrids are for gas mileage. The previous generation with the V6 got good gas mileage, better than the non-hybrid variant, but it was not impressive, it was not crazy. This generation, however, it's much better. The, the uh, gas mileage on the hybrid model is much better because of the four cylinder. But I will not lie to you, you're going to lose some power with the four cylinder, which makes it just like I called the 2021 Toyota Sienna. It's adequate power. It's not going to slam you in your seat and we're going, not like the V6, but it's adequate. It's enough power you're going to buy the hybrid variant if you really prefer gas mileage, which is still impressive for the size of this SUV. Now, when I said the 8-speed transmission, I kind of glanced over it and moved on. If you research on the 8-speed transmission, you're going to hear all kinds of problems with the previous generation. And when I just told you it's the same transmission, uh, you're going to be concerned, and I understand. However, here's the thing with the 8-speed transmission. If you, This is for you if you're buying one or you... You just bought one and you're concerned. The eight-speed transmission does not have a problem in this generation. However, it is an odd shifting transmission. To make a long story short, it has too many gears. It's, as soon as you start driving, it's already gonna shift in a very high gear. And when you accelerate hard, it's just gonna have this frenzy to downshift. And now it wants to, it revs up and it just makes this weird behavior. That's normal. I know it's not normal when you feel it, experience it, but that's not a problem with the transmission. That's just the way they are. All this is happening for emissions, for fuel economy, not really a problem with the transmission where it's gonna not last and not be reliable. I just want us to distinguish between the problem that the previous generation or when this transmission first came out had and the normal characteristics of this transmission. And I'm with you, they're annoying. So I encourage you, if you're buying one, Focus on the transmission. Make sure you like the way it drives and accelerate, kind of let it downshift and feel how, what it does. It does that frenzy of shifting, downshifting, so you know exactly what you're buying and not find out after you've already signed the papers and it's yours. Now, on the hybrid side of things, the transmission is the P810, which is shared with the RAV4 Prime and the Sienna Hybrid. It actually debuted in the Highlander in the 2020 year. It's a good transmission, there's no problems with it. It does not have the same thing as the eight speed. No, it's a continuously variable transmission. It is not a CVT, it is an eCVT, which is completely different. I will leave a video in the description where I explain how hybrids work, 
so you know what the difference between a conventional CVT and an eCVT in a Toyota Hybrid. Let's talk about the all-wheel drive system because we, we have some changes in the all-wheel drive system. The previous system was an ancient one. It just has a conventional transfer case, had a differential in the back with a coupler in the front. It can either be 50-50 distribution or no all-wheel drive. It just disconnects and connects. Very simple. It's been used for many, many years in various Toyota models and relatively reliable overall. However, on this generation Highlander, just like the RAV4, the current generation RAV4, now we have torque vectoring, which is, uh, again, to make a long story short, helps with fuel economy, helps with better driving experience, if you would. Now, the models that have the torque vectoring are the Limited, Platinum, and XSE. Only all the other models that are all-wheel drive will have the conventional old-school all-wheel drive that works great. And uh, that's that for, for the all-wheel drive. On the hybrids, however, things are different. Of course, there's no transfer case. There's just a motor in the back, which is pretty much a carryover. It's solid. It's a giant chunk that has an electric motor. They really don't have many problems as long as you take care of them. Don't let them run low on fluid and replace the fluid at, on time. Starting with the interior, I really like the interior. They really did a good job. Everything looks very upscale and nice. The previous generation did have a very nice interior, but this takes it to the next level. Everything is really laid out nice. Everything looks great. I really like all, everything you see is very easy to operate, very simple. And of course, this is a Toyota. Things should not be complicated. Driving the Highlander, it is nice, smooth, quiet, very comfortable. However, it is not the most athletic. That is something expected of a Highlander. I expected a little bit more of an improvement from the TNGA. However, it's still not the most stable at high speeds, just like the previous ones. But again, it's not pretending to be someone it's not. It is not an athletic car and it was not intended to be. But for a family SUV, I think this is a great SUV. It has a, tons of features, it's very quiet, it's very refined, it's very nice, and it's a nice place to be. Let's talk about some of the safety tech that it has. So the 2020 model has Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which basically means it has full speed dynamic cruise control, and it also has lane keep assist, and it has lane tracing assist. Now the 2021 model, which was something unexpected that they halfway changed it, the 2021 model actually has 2.5 plus. Now, many people are confused about what's the difference and should I get this or this? Honestly, function-wise or overall function will be very similar. They'll still have full speed dynamic cruise control. They'll still have the lane tracing or their, their center of the car in the lane. But the 2.5 plus takes everything and improves it. Now it can pick up pedestrians, bicycles. It just improves things overall but the very basic functions are the same. Now, like I mentioned, this is a very nice SUV. It's very well equipped, either, even at the lowest levels. It has a lot of options, standard, even in the LE trim. As a family SUV, it's a great family SUV. I think that's the main purpose of this SUV. It's, it's for people who think the minivan is too much. They don't need something that large and that family oriented. They need something a little bit less. This would be a perfect, SUV for families. Reliability on the Highlander is expected to be very good actually because this drivetrain has been around for a while. The 8-speed transmission can be annoying but it's not problematic like the, when it first came out in 2017 in the Highlander. Everything else seems pretty carried over. There's When they come up with a new model people are always like oh what's the latest and the greatest and all this new technology. Well this has been out for a few years and everything except the torque vectoring which is still a question mark because when it first came out in the RAV4 it did have some issues initially but in the Highlander so far so good we don't have any issues and we'll talk about some of the common issues in a little bit later in the video. Now, if you're out shopping for one, here's a recommendation for you. In my personal opinion and professional opinion, and what I see people buy, the XLE trim is going to be the most popular one. It's not as bare bones basic as the LE model, and it's not as expensive as the Platinum Limited and XSE. The XLE kind of have 
best of both worlds. The price is okay, the equipment is very nice, the interiors are very nice, and you get this kind of fit for all trim that has the best of both worlds, the cheaper world and the more expensive world. Don't get me wrong, the limited Platinum and the XSE, they're beautiful and the options are, are even much that much better but also the price is a lot higher. The LAE, while the price is lower, it really doesn't justify all the stuff that you're gonna lose for a small drop in price. The best looking one of them all is the XSE. I th when I first saw the XSE, it was a striking looking thing. It's a very handsome looking SUV, in my opinion. Now let's talk about some things that I was not very impressed with with the Highlander. Things that might bother you enough where you might look elsewhere. The first thing is, if you are coming from a previous generation Highlander, the back of glass was the coolest feature that you could just open the glass itself and throw stuff in the back real quick. You don't have to open the whole door. Well, unfortunately, Toyota decided to cancel that. So in this 2020 and up generation Highlander, the back door glass does not open. You have to open the whole door. That was a really one of the highlights of the Highlander. And unfortunately, that's been discontinued. So that's a shame, really, because I thought that was one of the coolest features with the Highlander. The overall stability, and if you are a car enthusiast and maybe you have another nice car and this is a the family SUV, the stability is not impressive on the highway, folks. It's okay, but it's not impressive. When we went to the TNGA on all other models, the stability improved dramatically. And it was like... A significant difference but in the highlander it almost feels exactly the same as the previous one it's adequate it's not impressive when you went from the 17 camry to the 18 camry the tnga things were dramatically different but when you went from the non-tnga to the tnga highlander it's almost the same and it still feels a little bit on the light side at higher speeds now one thing that i don't understand what toyota was thinking the center council situation, and I'll call it a situation, because if you go with the XLE, like I just recommended, you likely will get a wireless charger, phone charger, which is great. I love that feature. It's very convenient, very nice. However, they decided to put it in the center council, blocking your center council. And in order for you to get out, get rid of it, to access your center console, you have to pull the thing, and now that thing is in your way, and you have very narrow access to the center console. It kind of defeats the purpose of the sliding door of the center console. You know, they did that so you wouldn't, you can open it while you're driving, but now you have to pull the wireless charger, and now that's in your way, and now you're kind of going like this. It's just not the best place for it, honestly. I much rather they would have put it somewhere in the in the storage cup right here. That would have been a much more sensible location for it. But that's their design and that's something to me is a huge negative. Basically it makes the center console a little bit of a hassle to access. Another thing is the eight-speed transmission. We've talked about this a little bit. The eight-speed transmission is annoying. Every time you accelerate to overpass, you want to just kind of take off, downshift and take off. It does this frenzy and it just downshifts way too many gears and it feels, shoots up the RPM. And it can be extremely annoying every time it does that. If you're driving normally cruising, even an, around town, it's okay. But when you're kind of getting up in speeds and you want to overtake somebody, you press gas down, it's just an annoying feeling what it does. And then the last two things I got, which are nothing significant and specific to the Highlander. This is Toyota wide, the start stop technology. This is something that we have to deal with with emissions. It's very annoying. And the problem is you, because it's an emission device, you can't really cancel it. So every time you get in the Highlander, you got to turn it off. If you don't want to deal with it shutting off and on the engine, the good thing is they did put the button right here. It's super easy to access, not somewhere hidden in the menus or somewhere else. It's very easily accessible. The other thing is the brake hold. While I'm super happy that this feature is now available in most Toyotas, you can't set it automatically where every time you start the car, it's on. You gotta, every time you start the car, you press the hold button to activate it. Now, it kind of will become routine after a while. You start your Highlander, you press the hold, you press the start stop off button, and that just becomes kind of the routine of starting your car. 
Let's talk about a few features that you might not know existed or little gadgets that would make your life easier if you knew. First off, there is a service mode for the wipers where the car will bring the wipers up for ease of replacement. Super simple to do, just turn the key on, turn the key off or shut off the car and within 45 seconds push the wiper arm up and here goes the wipers. Now they're super easy to access and you can service them and when you're done with the car key on or engine running you're just going to push the wiper up and it goes back to its rest position. Another thing is all previous Toyotas that had this similar radio system the mode button was labeled as you can use it to mute the radio if you want to talk whatever the case may be. However in the Highlander I noticed they do not have that. That's gone but it's actually not gone just the writing is missing. If you actually press and hold the mode button it will mute the radio. And another thing for related to the steering wheel here many people have complained many viewers have told me about this they can't cancel the lane keep assist some folks don't like it and I understand can be annoying at times but you can't cancel it with the button on the steering wheel you have to go in the menus well actually that's not the case if you press the button once or twice it's going to toggle between lane trace assist on and off but if you press and hold it it'll actually turn it off altogether and you'll see the icon on the dash disappear Thought I'd bring this up because a lot of my viewers have asked me about this. And the last feature I want to show you is most of these models have remote start. Except the very low grade ones but XLE and up will have built in remote start. You can access it through the app but did you know that you can actually remote start your car from the key even if you don't have a subscription. Most people don't know this. All you got to do is press the lock button once, twice and on the third time press and hold it. And wait, there you go. Let's wait for that engine to start. There you go. You got remote start from the remote. Well, let's address some of the common issues that I've seen working in the dealership and servicing these cars when they're new. Before I start though, I would like to say one thing. Every new model that launches with Toyota, I am the first person to open the door, get in the car, check it out. Toyota is very stringent about their quality with new models. So every model will have kind of a reputation. Was it a good launch? Was it a rough one? Rough ones, example is 2016 Tacoma, it had way too many problems from production from day one and that's just the way it is. But the 2020 Highlander was actually a very quiet launch. The car launched, we were all on alert waiting for any issues to catch them so we can report them so they can get fixed very quickly but actually things were very quiet for this Highlander and in the recent years it is almost a record things were very good with the Highlander there are very few minor issues that I'm going to mention here starting with the AC so we had a few and this was more 20s than 21s there was a few that all of a sudden the AC would just quit working altogether. No cold air coming out of the vents and uh, that was that. There was actually a one of the fittings on the condenser always did not clip all the way in. That was potentially a production problem. There's not a lot of information on it but I just thought I'd bring it up to you. If all your AC quit all of a sudden look for the condenser this is of course going to be covered under warranty but in case you're not and it happens look at the condenser first and look at the lines going to the condenser the second issue is and this is also 2020 and not just 2020 very early built 2020s if you bought your 2020 in the end of 19 or very beginning of 20 the transmission had a flare-up so a flare-up is you're driving and between the when it shifts from first to second the rpm will go way up almost like slipping it's actually not slipping it's something with the software there's a software update to solve this problem this only applies to early 20s and only for that flare-up concern all the later 20s and the 21s they do not have this issue and the last but not least issue is one that you're going to read about on the internet it starts with your defrost not working right it's not taking the humidity out it's not working it's not defrosting anything and the problem here is there is a little motor that changes the mode from fresh air, bring fresh air from outside or recirculates, recirculate the air inside the cabin. That motor has a problem and there's a little separation and it basically stops working, stops doing what it needs to do and then you have these issues. 
and people will hear, sometimes you'll hear noises behind the dash happening or just the door will completely fall out and there's nothing. You can't change fresh air to recirculate. It'll either stuck either or and that's that. This is actually a problem that you'll hear about a lot and a lot of my viewers asked me about this. Now there is a fix for it. There's an updated door. Most of these will be covered under warranty in case you are out. I recommend you call the Experience Center, Toyota Experience Center, if you're in the US or your local Toyota branch, ask for goodwill. Toyota is very good about taking care of these people. This is really the only annoying real problem with this car, if you would. The rest of the software updates, they're really not the end of the world. But this one is an actual problem. If you ever have it, it's as simple as replacing a servo and a door. Call your dealership, inquire about it, but if you don't have this problem, then you don't have this problem. You can't fix this preventatively. You need to have the problem to be able to get it fixed. So that's your Highlander. I think it's a very good SUV, and typically a lot of my viewers will ask me recommendations for cars. Here's my recommendation for the Highlander. It's a family SUV. It's super comfortable, easy to get in and out of, very comfortable. It's not too high, too truck-like, like the 4Runner. And it's not too small and car-like, like the RAV4. It's kind of in between, and that's the whole purpose. Lately, SUVs have been becoming like shoe sizes, where uh, there is multiples, and the size difference is very small. But the Highlander is an original one. It's been out for a very long time, and it's the perfect family SUV. I expect it to be very reliable. And what I usually tell my viewers is, if you're looking at a 4Runner and you think it's too much of a truck, you need to look at the Highlander. The 4Runner is one of the best SUVs Toyota makes, but it is a truck and it is mainly meant for off-roading. Yes, you can use it as a family SUV, but the Highlander will do better than the 4Runner as a family SUV. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new, whether you're shopping for one or you already own one. I wish you the best with your shopping or ownership of the Highlander. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.